Alright guys, that's Software Dev Jason here. Uh, my goal today is to um, is to get the pistons in. Uh, I've been working on sizing the rings for the last uh, about an hour or so. Um, I've got three of them done. I'm going to be doing the um, cylinder four now and I'll show you how to do that. So, let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some oil and I'm going to cut the inside of the uh, cylinder. And this is just to help uh, uh, make sure we don't scratch the walls uh, or any vertical scratches anyway um, on the walls when we're um, sliding the rings in and out here at the top. The first ring I'm going to um, I'm going to try to size is um, the uh, topmost compression ring on the piston and so to do that um, I, I coated the outside edge of this ring with oil as well. Um, I, I've been kind of doing it this way. I kind of sit it in here like that. I squeeze it together and spin it So I got the uh, compression ring, this compression ring that we're going to be measuring, um, seated inside of the cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the second compression ring, and then I'm going to put it on the piston in the second slot. Now that we can use this as a guide to flush up the uh, the compression ring we're trying to measure. So we want that to be completely even inside of the cylinder. So we'll do nothing more than push that down till that ring seats and then our ring that we're wanting to measure is flush in there and our gap, uh, so our gap will be accurate. Centering gaps uh, for the 2.0 liter SPI engine is one hundredths of an inch to, to three one hundredths of an inch. So now we're going to take a one hundredths of an inch uh, filler gauge and see if we can get it in that gap. And it won't go in. So we know this ring is too tight. And it's not in spec pull that out um, I've been trying to push it together turn it back sideways compressing it and sliding it right out so I don't scratch the wall this is my setup um, I think I mentioned in a previous video I was, I was trying to track down a uh, piston ring filer uh, none of the tool shops will allow you to rent them um, and I wasn't going to pay $60 for one so um, this is what I've done I've put a key file in the vise here and this worked this worked just fine on the other three uh, piston rings. So I'm filing only one side of the one, one side of the ring, and I'm just I'm keeping it flat because you want to keep uh, you want these two ends to, to meet up perfectly. So I'm keeping the uh, the ring flat against the file, and I'm just dragging it back like this. And as you can see, it's t it's taken off um, tiny bits of metal at a time. All right, so you don't want to do that too long because you don't want to take off too much metal. Uh, so I usually I've been doing it for about 30 seconds, and you can tell it's not taking off much. So you can wipe that off and go repeat that process again. You uh, you can put the rings in, or how I've been doing it. So I've been compressing them together, putting them in sideways, compressing them together, and then turning it. All right, so we're going to make sure this is uh, flush inside of the cylinder again. And we're going to try to get our 100 of an inch uh, feeler gauge in the ring gap again. Okay. It almost goes in, but there's too much drag at the back. I can't get it all the way in. So we're going to file a little bit more off and get it within spec. 
All right, so one more time. Let's see if I can get this 100 inch filler gauge in there. Okay, that goes in. Let's see where we're actually at. I'm trying to keep them consistent. Okay, that goes in there. Okay, so we're at point zero one two inches and that's about where all the other cylinders rings were which is at the uh, at the tightest it's, it's, it's within spec but it's the tightest uh, the tightest spec so these rings are fairly tight okay so we've got the top compression ring um, gapped properly and this was the one we were using to uh, to flush up that one uh, this is the second uh, compression ring it's actually when it's installed it's going to go back into this spot so for now, we're going to take uh, this one off. We're going to put the top compression ring back in the spot that one was at. And we're going to do the same thing uh, to this one. We're going to size it and get the gaps right on it. All right, so I flushed that one up, and we're going to check this. All the other cylinders, yep. Um, the second compression ring was already within spec on, um, on all the other ones, so I figured it would be on this one as well. We've already uh, we've got the rings right um, for the uh, the top and the second uh, compression ring, and again that was 0 0.01 to 0 0.03. That's the spec for that. Uh, you have two other rings uh, that are part of the old control ring, and those have a little bit different spec. Uh, they need to be within 0 0.016 to 0 0.06. You can uh, you can tell which rings are, are, are what, uh, especially with these oil control rings, these are a lot thinner and a lot more flimsy than the two compression rings. The, the two compression rings are, are pretty thick and the topmost compression ring is kind of a uh, uh, more of a silver color and the middle one or the second compression ring is, is almost black. So uh, the, just read the instructions on the uh, ring kit that you get. Uh, they'll usually be labeled one, two and oil, oil rings one is the top one. So for the oil control rings, um, the minimum gap in the spec was 0 .016. So we're going to see if we can get this filler gauge in there and I can already tell if you look down in the cylinder, um, right there is the gap and there's not much of one. So I'm going to be able to know almost immediately that that's not going to fit in there. So I'm going to have to file those off. Uh, it's the same process as the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and get those gapped right. Okay, so I've got all of the rings gapped properly. The last thing I need to do before I start sliding them in there is uh, I really need to clean up the cylinder walls really well from when we um, deglaze them. And I need to clean up the pistons because I was, you know, I had dirty gloves on when I was doing those rings. And so the pistons have some, some uh, dust and stuff on them. So um, I'm going to clean up these cylinder walls really well. I'm going to clean up uh, the pistons, and then I will show you um, how to put the uh, rings on. Yeah, show you how to put the rings on, all the rings. Okay, I've got two of the pistons in, and I've got the, uh, the third piston I've already put the rings on, so I'm going to show you how to put the, the rings on for uh, when it's ready to get back in the car. Uh, this is the oil control. It's like a little guide for the two rings down there. I have cleaned the uh, cleaned the piston up, got all the dirt off of it. Clean these rings. Um, for these, they said don't don't use a piston ring tool, so I'm gonna put them on by hand. And when I said they, the, the talking about the manual. That's the uh, that's the bottom. I got the bottom one on. When you install the piston, the rings have already got to be at uh, 120 degrees. Um, 
the gaps are separated by 120 degrees from the top down. So you know these two are going to be um, 120 degrees apart. And these two are kind of hard to spin when you and line up when you've already got them on the piston. So you can go ahead and put this one on at about 120 degrees, um, the gap, 120 degrees away from that gap. And that's what's one less thing you have to worry about lining up. Because it kind of spins as one piece. So about 120 degrees from that gap. It's about right over here somewhere. Okay, so that is the oil control ring, and those gaps are about right, so you just won't have to fiddle with it as much when you're trying to compress them. Okay, this is the, the second compression ring. Uh, most of these, some of these come with some kind of dot on them, or some kind of numbering, and usually that's, that faces up. On these, that end faces up. On this ring. Okay. The, the middle ring is um feels a little bit stronger than this top one, and it's black on this set. Whereas the top ring, the top compression ring, is actually kind of a bronze. A bronze color. The instructions will tell you which one's which. Again, this one is um, this one has the the letter on it as well that that faces up. Alright, so now that they're all in there, you can kind of line them up. So I'm going to start with uh, the top ring with the gap at a, like a 12 o'clock position. I'm going to go about 120 degrees with the gap for the second compression ring. And then our third one we can turn as one piece. And line that gap up. Okay, so after you get the rings lined up, um, like I mentioned previously, um, you'll take a ring compressor. There's a bunch of different kinds. Uh, there's some that are a lot better than this kind here. Slip it over the top of your rings. Keep an eye on them to make sure they aren't spinning around on you. And you start cranking this thing down. Okay, so I've already put this uh, this bottom bearing on the connecting rod, and it's got a Sibley lube on it. Uh, it only goes one way. Just make sure that the notch, um, make sure the notch is in that spot there, and make sure the the holes line up down there. Um, and I believe the caps um, are notch to notch, so they're notch on the bearing on the cap, and those will line up. So I'm gonna sit this down on top of the cylinder that and then I'm going to take I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to start tapping now what you want to look out for is if you're doing this by yourself is so that the uh, when you're as you're tapping sometimes it'll push this piece up and then your springs will pop out the bottom so if you have a really good uh, ring compressor, this may slide down into the top of your cylinder just a little bit at the top, where it's got like a beveled edge. If that's the case, then you don't really have to worry about it. This one is, is not very good, so you kind of have to hold it and tap. Um, and periodically, if, you, if, if you're doing this like I'm doing and the crank is still in the car, before you get it too far down in there, um, Go under the car and check and make sure you're not going to catch anything on the crank.
All right, it's gonna it's lining up pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to tap this in. There we have it. So I'm fixing to push down the uh, the last piston. The rest of them are in. Um, what I what I've done is that bearing um, on the connecting rod on the top of the connecting rod. Uh, I assembly lube that. I assembly lube uh, this journal here where it's going to connect to the crank. I'm going to guide the connecting rod down onto the crank to make sure it doesn't nick it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is the connecting rod cap. These are all new bearings. Now I'm going to put this on. All of the uh, connecting rod caps are on, and I'm going to torque these down to 28 foot pounds. So, got the pistons in. Um, turn that over a few times. No problems, I don't believe. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get the oil pump back in. Um, let me see if I don't run into any snags with this. So I got some, some daylight left, so I'm going to go ahead and try to put this in. Well, um, I had the oil pump on, <clears throat> so I thought I was doing pretty well until I, uh, well, I put the oil pump on with the seal already in which I think is the way that they say to do it but um, I had the oil pump in and everything was going good and I was fixing to torque everything down and I looked in there and there was some kind of spring that I didn't remember seeing and it was kind of in a bind around the uh, crankshaft well the seal has a, um, a spring around it and I assume it's to keep tension and keep the seal held to the crankshaft <clears throat> it had slipped off of there whenever I was uh, putting this oil pump on and I didn't see it slip off so good thing I caught it but uh, I had to pull the oil pump back off so about that's about all I'm gonna get done tonight